David, is there a big difference between, I mean, you've talked and, and, you know, about using LHRH agonist or antagonist. Is, does it make a difference if we use an agonist or an antagonist? Well, I think it does, and I'm just uh, historically, um, it, what we, we measured testosterone by a double isotope dilution method, which was not accurate below 50, and so that was the standard that we, the FDA set. Well, then we came along with other ways, like mass spec and things, and we learned that with orchiectomy, your testosterone got down to bilateral orchiectomy 14 to 17, but you still had some testosterone around. Um, and so then what happened was a couple guys from Europe, uh, Juan Marotti and uh, a guy named Pericaino, looked at testosterone levels on men on, on three-month LHRH agonist and related their testosterone levels that they got and the escapes that occurred to an outcome. And what they showed was that in men that got their testosterone less than 20 and kept it there, that they had a, a better survival and, and also in one of the studies, time to androgen dependence. Independence was uh, prolonged when you got your testosterone down. Now, you know, everybody argues that's a small study, two small studies. Well, I tell you, there are going to be some data coming out very shortly from the Canadian Rising PSA Intermittent Therapy Trial, which heavily substantiates that T levels that you obtain are directly related to your outcome. So then it comes back to Shally back in the 80s when he was working with LHRH compounds, and LHRH actually, uh, and later won a Nobel Prize. He was working, trying to get an antagonist. He wanted to lower LH and FSH right away. Well, he had one, but it could never work in, 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 in humans because of the volume and histamine problems. And so they went with an agonist, which is a decapeptide where you change one amino acid. And they kind of backdoor it. You know, your, test, your FSH goes up, your LH goes up before it goes down. And so what, what happens is there are a couple things that are bad. One is called surge or flare. And, you know, we know that if you have spinal cord compression or urinary problems and you get this, it could get worse. And, uh, but we don't see that anymore, so we don't care about that. I mean, we'll say, what's a little rise in testosterone in a guy with PSA or, or you know, bone nuts? And, and, you know, we have a, we have a nice pr uh, this thing we're showing here of an MRI that's done on men an MRI done on a man with metastatic disease and you can see the lesion and you can follow it for three months, there's not much change. An MRI of a, of a man that has, uh, that got an, a, an agonist and what you see is a significant flare of the disease in the bone. I mean, it really lights up. And then a guy that got an antagonist, you see an immediate improvement in the MRI. Isn't that what we want? Plus PSA goes up when you give an agonist for biochemical failure. And I think the other thing that, that's really important right now is this cardiovascular stuff with androgen deprivation. And that's why we're moving to shorter androgen deprivation. And, the, you know, the issue is, is, is that there's actually been FDA warnings against agonists, not antagonists. And Neil Shore, who we all know, will be presenting very shortly a pooled data analysis from um, a number of five or six large trials of a drug called Decarelix, which is antagonist versus an agonist. And what he has shown very clearly is that there is a difference in cardiovascular death rate between an antagonist and an agonist. If you have prior cardiovascular disease, you've got a 9% versus a 3% risk of dying um, when, you're on, when you're on the trial. That's, you know, that's three times that. How do you explain and, that? And I, that's, how do I explain that? And, and how do you I was just going to say that. And the, you explain it. There's a number, there may be a number of ones, but one of the things are there are LHRH receptors uh, on a lot of different cells, including T cells. And an antagonist, also, uh, an agonist and an agonist, an agonist and antagonist can bind to these T cells. And what uh, Matt Smith and others have shown and hypothesized is that the antagonist actually does not promote T cell activity to the point of, of cytokines and inflammation, whereas an agonist does. And we know that, that in plaques and, and that there's inflammation. And so the explanation is, is that the agonists promote T cell activity, cytokines, and then the, the risk of, uh, uh, with, with plaques and things like that. So that's one, one thought. 
um, that's out there. And, you know, I think that as this goes on, that's going to be, you know, studied further, and it, it needs to be. And I think it, it really points out that maybe there is something, there are some advantage, distinct advantages. Do you think you can mitigate some of these effects of uh, um, agonists by CAB, complete nitrogen blockade, or perhaps some of the newer uh, androgen synthesis inhibitors that are on the market for advanced prostate cancer, perhaps mm. moving them earlier? No, I, you know, here, this is a, I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot about that, about CAB. Um, you, you don't block, you don't block Polera completely with an anti-androgen. You still get it. You can still, still see PSAs go up. And then we did a study uh, years ago of, of uh, Lupron, Luprolide, and Flutamide that showed that it, there was a six-month survival benefit. And then we turned around and did another study in SWA with orchiectomy and Flutamide, and we didn't see the big difference. And everybody said, well, that's because Lupron's a bad dog, or Luprolide, and Flutamide makes it look good. What, 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 we, what we've also learned with antagonist and agonist is FSH. FSH is an important stimulus. It's a mitogen. It's a, there's articles in New England Journal of Medicine about FSH in blood vessels. It has an angiogenic effect. It's stimulus. So the, some of the highest rates of FSH you get and, and men on hormone therapy are with bilateral orchiectomy. And the lowest rate you get is with an antagonist, and an agonist is above that. So it may be the reason our orchiectomy trial was negative, uh, not so positive, was FSH. FSH. Dr. Quinn.